good morning let us now complete our discussion of mahesh l kanchwar's uh, plays uh, by looking at the uh, slides uh, mahesh l kanchwar born 1939 was uh, born in a telugu brahmin family and migrated uh, early on to vidarbha district in maharashtra he completed his education in nagpur university and it was in nagpur that he was exposed to marathi theater and influenced by the plays of vijay tendulkar he experimented with expressionist and absurdist theater theater for him had to do with realizing the multiple possibilities of the experience of life he also challenged the hierarchy between art and ideology between individual and social or collective pain and suffering uh, there was also an emphasis on poetry in his uh, or the poetic mode in his theater uh, through the, the 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 gestural repertoire of the body of the actor's body to connote emotions in uh, the first play we discuss garbo uh, we portrays the alienation and isolation of urban life in bombay from the perspective of three male characters from nagpur shrimant is a wealthy businessman into a professor and pansy an adolescent they are all struggling and experience the sterility of their lives garbo is uh, as shrimant calls a sex machine and ex- and he, she's an exalted mother figure for pansy and an inexhaustible aesthetic ideal for intuk all the men seek redemption and hope through the imagination of garbo on whom they project their frustrations and fantasies they use the desires to transcend themselves but their private fantasies of garbo is undermined by her bitter comebacks and self contempt as a b grade actress who has sexual affairs with many men each of the, of the men see their collective salvation in garbo's baby that they later discover was aborted by her during a shoot they are initially hopeful the baby will inherit the name but they are later disillusioned and realize they are condemned to remain in their world of filth and sterility shrimant is revealed as an as an emasculate and insecure man who needs garbo to validate his masculinity and sexual prowess while he actually wants pansy with whom he also has a sexual affair into into confess conf- confesses he is a poet who lacks originality and needed garbo as his muse who would inspire artistic creativity but now that she cannot become a mother again they welcome her as a part of their sterile world the body seems to be the only reality and the sexual act the only way of potentially attaining identity and recognition and relief from a sterile world but even the body ends up becoming a lie shrimant stabs garbo in the end the blood is real but garbo is no more they realize the garbo the new was merely an embodiment of their fantasies of redemption and transcendence she is barely given the opportunity to speak or resist the constructions of her of her as an aesthetic ideal or as a uh, source of sexual plenitude or as a mother figure for pansy in the old stone mansion uh, it's set in the old decrepit mansion of the deshpandes a landed brahmin family that is losing its status and power to newly instituted land reforms the growth of bombay as a metropolis that promises jobs enables many other caste groups from the village particularly the cooks who work for the deshpandes to migrate to bombay in search of jobs other lower caste groups brew liquor or work in newly set up restaurants in the village the play was inspired by anton chekhov's play the cherry orchard that described socio economic transformations in early 20th century russia with the abolition of serfdom the decline of the aristocracy and the rise of the middle class the orchard that belongs to a landowner has to be auctioned and sold to a newly freed serf and is chopped off at the end of the play as the family moves out similarly in uh, the old stone mansion the tractor becomes a symbol of the hollow prestige of the deshpande family something that is no longer an economic investment in a village with small land holdings and hardly any electricity bhaskar the eldest son refuses to accept that they are no longer as rich as they were they are indebted to the vegetable seller who has now started his own business and wants to buy the orchard if they can't repay their debts bhaskar wants to have an extravagant funeral for his father and asks sudhir for money sudhir who is his younger brother power over the household also is transferred from the mother in law to vahini bhaskar's wife and eldest daughter in law and you must remember that sudhir sudhir also is unable to give bhaskar any money uh, because he is himself struggling to make ends in men's meat in bombay which is an expensive city where one has to work all the time to repay loans and mortgages and just survive in a rented apartment the rest of the family assumes he leads a comfortable life and cannot imagine urban debt the family berates anjali for her konkanastha brahmin origins her fair skin and education 
Her son Abhay is supposed to be a good student and sportsman. Abhay is contrasted to Parag, Bhaskar's son, who is a drunk, wastrel and drug addict. The patriarch's daughter Prabha wanted to study further. Prabha being Bhaskar's sister, wants to, wanted to study further and leave the house but her father never let her. Different generations of characters symbolize historical change. The patriarch's mother has lost her memory and still thinks her son is alive. The patriarch's widow, Ai, has her share of the house sold by Bhaskar to raise money to repay their debts. The Deshpandis are only left with their ancestral jewellery, which is a symbol of their familial reputation. Bhaskar's daughter, Ranju, is exposed and drawn to the urban world through the radio and her English tutor, with whom she has an affair in elopes, taking the jewellery with her. But the tutor deceives her and steals the jewellery, and Sudhir ends up bringing Ranju back in a taxi to preserve the family's reputation. This ruins Prabha's only hope of seeking her share of the jewellery and escaping the house. Parag is let down by his uncle Sudhir. He hopes to go to Mumbai with him so that he may have access to a more exciting and freer urban world. The play ends with the backyard and orchard being mowed down as it is being sold to save the family from bankruptcy. Chandu is the only son who sacrifices his happiness to take care of his mother and sister. In Desire in the Rocks, the play is a story of incest and again the sterility of life like Garbo. The play has two major characters, Hemakant and Lalita, who are brother and sister, and five unnamed women from the village. The play like Garbo depicts itself as a site for a drama between the oppressive norms of society and the transgressive impulses of art and eroticism that challenge these norms. This battle is embodied in the body of the woman, in this case Lalita, which results in the disillusionment of the man and the de-idealization de of the woman. Lalita has spent all her life trapped in a wooden mansion. She was her father's adoptive daughter who abandoned her in the mansion. She belongs to a lineage that is believed to have been cursed with no natural surviving heirs. Every child is stillborn, which is why Dada Sahib, Lalita's adoptive father, abandons her in the mansion to pursue his own education. She is reunited with her much older brother 20 years later after he left the mansion to pursue his career as an artist. Hemakant is initially an emotionally detached artist who is willing to isolate himself for the sake of art. Lalita is the embodiment of his unconscious desire, his creativity. He uses her to assume different postural expressions of his ideal embodiment of love and desire. She loves Hemakant, but he is unable to, re to return her love. She accuses him of being a fake artist and he believes she does not understand art. There is an authoritarian nature to Himakan's unconscious world of art and eroticism and Lalita is unwilling to surrender herself to, to own, is willing to surrender herself to own and possess Himakanth and the transformation in Himakanth occurs when his statues of Lalita are destroyed by the villagers. Lalita, who, came, who claims to be a creator like Hemakant, gives birth to, to, to a dead baby, which confirms her fear that she has sinned by loving her own brother, for which she continues to live in sin by turning to prostitution to survive. She has no access to her own ancestral property, which is managed by trustees. When Lalita sings to a baby, the child of one of the women in the village, they scold her an outcast of her being an unlucky and sinful presence. Both Lalita and Hemakant realize they are both Sterile creators. Hemakant is stoned and beaten up by the villagers while Lalita turns to prostitution. They realize the falsity of the body and even as they surrender to each other in love and intimacy, they are both destroyed in the mansion where they lived. In Sonata, the play depicts its subtle power dynamics between three women, all in their 40s and friends from school. Two of them, Aruna and Dolan, have been living together for 17 years in Dolan's lavish flat in a skyscraper in Bombay. The play is double. Dolan and Aruna use Subhadra's affairs and lifestyle and the lonely typer's neighbor to boost their own sense of superiority and privilege. Intimacy and animosity are the two mutually reinforcing forces that uh, characterize their relationships. They do not approve of Subhadra's promiscuity and her relationship with a violent drunkard. For Subhadra, her friends are a temporary source of relief from her violent and intimate relationship with the man. She is a journalist who has just lost her job. After Subhadra exits, their secret desires and animosity between Dolan and Aruna is revealed. Aruna is a disciplined Sanskrit professor who also writes sentimental stories for a women's magazine. She is also emotionally distant and not open to touching and being touched by others. Dolan is a banker who is a self-indulgent and restless woman searching for attention and intimacy. 
If Subhadra's insecurities are concealed by her obsession with attractive men, Dolan is, is obsessed with her own Bengali culture, Rabindu Shangit, and food. And Aruna has intellectual pretensions in, in terms of her career as a prestigious and well-traveled scholar and writer. Dolan resents the fact that Aruna wrote a story of a woman who leads a reckless life and is a thinly veiled allusion to Dolan. She thinks Aruna has betrayed her. Later, Dolan reveals her implicit desire for Aruna and her betrayal when she had an intimate encounter with her ex-husband Avinash. Aruna is willing to let go of the past and restores her friendship with Dolan. This ends our uh, discussion of Mahesh al Kanjwa's plays. Now we will move on to uh, the plays of Mahesh Dattani. Thank you.